What's going on everybody? My name is Jake, I like to talk tunes and today we're here to talk about a band I have a very close affinity with, one of uh, Ireland's most notable exports over the last few years and that band is Fontaine's DC. Fontaine's DC are a band I've followed for a long time now, they're one of my favourite bands in the world for a good number of years, uh, but recently I've kind of fallen out of favour with them. They're not, I don't have that close personal connection that I once did with the band. So I want to break down their career from college students writing collections of poetry all the way to Grammy nominated rock stars. The band, which consists of Green Chatton on vocals, Tom Call on drums, Connor Deegan on bass, Connor Curley on guitar and Carlos O'Connell on guitar, uh, met at B the BIM Institute B -I -M -M, in the Liberties in Dublin when they were all studying music as college students. The five lads bonded at college over their shared love of poetry and actually even released two collections of poetry together as groups. Uh, one called Vroom, which is inspired by the beat poets like Kerouac and Ginsberg, and one called Winding, which is inspired by Irish poets like Yeats, Kavanaugh, Butler, uh, people like that. When they turned their attention to being a band, however, none of these poems did make it as songs, although Television Screens, which is off their first record, was actually originally a poem for Winding and I think for Winding but was morphed and moulded and eventually became the song that we know as television screens. Over the years, the boys sort of grinded it out on the Irish indie scene, um, around the Dublin indie scene, and I sort of found out about them in around about 2016, 2017 through Twitter. Uh, in that time, there wasn't much of a sort of Irish indie scene. I grew up in Ireland, I grew up in Donegal, and there wasn't much of a sort of general overlapping Irish indie scene except for the, the big, big names. Uh, you had your Dublin scene, your Belfast and your Derry scene. Um, I think, I guess, the... the the Derry scene was kind of most of the North scene for the North, but you had like your Dublin scene, your Galway scene, your Cork scene, the one in the North, but in the Belfast, the Derry ones felt very different. But anyway, they were all quite, not necessarily self-contained, but people sort of kept to those sort of scenes until they felt bigger. And that's when I knew that we had something with Fontaine's DC. I was seeing them on people's Snapchat stories, people Instagram stories, clips on Twitter, clips on YouTube, and friends of mine from all over the country, from all these sort of different places and all these different scenes, were talking about this band. After doing a bit of digging through YouTube and SoundCloud, I found some old demos and some live performances back from when they were the, just called The Fontaines. Uh, and they were really, really good. They're a mix of like surf and garage rock with sort of more modern post-punk sounds. Uh, Green Chatton's thick accent and the unmistakably Irish lyrics about life in Dublin and life in Ireland in general. Everything came together so perfectly and it was very clear for me to see why so many people were talking about this band. They were, you know, they were the band that summed up youth in Ireland and it was great. Like I said, for about a year, year and a half, maybe two years, I had to go off clips of them on YouTube and little SoundCloud demos. Clip from them on YouTube like this. <laughs> That video was just taken on someone's phone at the Workman's, but I love that video, I watched it a load of times. There was also this clip of them at Whelan's. But eventually, in 2018, in August 2018, they released their first single, Liberty Bell. You know I love that Between August 2018 and the following April when they released their debut album, the band released three singles, all that came with the uh, Darklands version tag. Uh, all, sing all of these singles were recorded in the Darklands studios in Dublin and this was really what drew me to this band properly. These songs were definitely a bit raw and rough around the edges but that was the charm of the band. It was a stark reminder that these were just five lads from Dublin or the surrounding areas writing songs about life in Ireland. I mean they looked like this, they were just, they looked like five lads you would see down the pub drinking Guinness, reading a book, sat by the fire. Every single one of the songs they had released up until this point, I related to. Liberty Bells, a love letter to the Liberties in Dublin. It's a really, really nice place. There's really good pubs down there, including the Liberty Bell. Uh, but specifically Boys in the Better Land, that really spoke to me because that was just about the sort of Irish mentality. And I guess the rural anywhere mentality, but it's a, you know, it felt like an inherently Irish thing growing up over there in the sense that you won't make it if you won't make it in Ireland. And even if you think you can still make it in Ireland, if you were somewhere like I was in Donegal and Rathmullen, you're not, you don't feel like you're going to make it there. You won't make it there. You need to get to Dublin or Derry or Belfast. And then when you get to Dublin or Derry or Belfast or Galway or Cork or somewhere like that, you then go, ah, oh, shit, I need to go to London or Glasgow or Manchester or America. And so whether the better land was Dublin, Derry, Belfast, or the better land was America, England, Scotland, like, wherever, that song just resonated with me and pretty much everyone who was listening to it back then because it's this 
you know, it's this tongue in cheek thing of going, oh, you're you're gonna do it. You're gonna do that thing that you've been talking about doing for years, but you need to move there first. Right, I've got it. With the release of the three Darkland singles, I was just immediately on board, hooked, and so, so, so very excited for the band to finally release their first album, which they did in April 2019. The album is titled Doggerel, which is a reference to Doggerel, which was a working class poetry popularised in Ireland around the 1600s, uh, commonly referred to as the poetry of the people. And that's exactly what this album felt like. Another collection of poetry from the lads, except this time just fully set to some music. This isn't to say that the singles that have been released before didn't feel like poetry set to music, but having a complete through line, 11 songs all about Dublin, Ireland, life in Ireland, growing up in the sticks, this complete coherent through line with all of these songs set to this fantastic music which is just the perfect way for this band to really announce themselves as who they were. It was totally fresh, it was totally unique and most of all it was incredibly important. This was an album that the kids who listened to punk and post-punk and indie and rock and all these different genres in the weird little, in the small little towns in Ireland where there's there's no real scene for that and you kind of need to travel half an hour to maybe an hour and a half to find your closest scene this was the album for kids like that. This was the album and this was the band that those kids, myself included, could look and go, this is an album for me. This is a band for me. This is this is the thing that, that, that speaks to me the same way that the likes of Blink and Some 41 spoke to those suburban kids who were having their little rebellious moment in Southern California all those years ago. In my situation at that time, Fontaine's DC, around the time of Dogrel, that was the moment where I was like, that they're finally a band for me for what I'm feeling now. The record launched a universal acclaim grabbing the band a Mercury Prize nomination, also went to number four in Ireland and number nine in the UK, selling around 60,000 copies. And as much as I love that record, there was one issue for me specifically. A couple of the Darkland songs had made it to the record and they were sounding a little bit different. Most notably, Boys in the Better Land went from sounding like this. To this. But the main issue for me came with Liberty Bell. Liberty Bell was obviously the first single which originally sounded like this. Very, very but was now polished and stripped away. There was no echo on the mic. It sounded a lot cleaner. It sounded like this. He's just very, very tired of having that same old boring conversation. And I just didn't love it. I felt the charm and the personality of that song was stripped away. Overall, I love the record, but personally still, when I listen to it now, when it comes time for Liberty Bell on that album, I will queue up the Darklands version, and then I'll just skip the, the record version if I've got it in my earphones. The following summer, the band announced their comeback for their next record, A Hero's Death, with the lead single, A Hero's Death, and I was very, very excited. Then I listened to the song, and it didn't really hit for me. Uh, it was a good song, not a great one. There was nothing about it that really jumped out to me. But the one thing that I did notice is that it, they no longer felt it, they no longer felt like the band I'd fallen in love with. Don't get stuck in the past. Say your favourite things at mass. Tell your mother that you love her. I go out of your way for other. The the song sounded very polished, very clean, very not commercial, but just different and improved, but not really, if that makes sense. Before the album released later on that summer, there were two more singles, including Televised Mind. And Televised Mind is where I really started to see the cracks in the armour from Dog Roll manifest. And I could really put into words why I was no longer rocking with the band as much as I once was. In my eyes, it seemed like they were attempting to break new ground and find a bigger audience. And that's completely fair. That's totally fair. But it felt like they were leaving behind what brought them to the dance. It felt like they'd had some good success. Number four, number nine, as I mentioned, with Dog Roll. They went, okay, we can do better than this. People like us in England and America. Let's make an album that's more accessible to England and America and kind of strip away all the charm of us as five, five Dublin lads. To me, it just felt like the roots as the small Irish band were slowly being chipped away to become another generic post-punk band. Except this time, Green Chat has an Irish accent. I mean, this is a clip of tell. This is a little spot of televised mine. If you like the song, fair enough, but I'm sure you see where I'm coming from. The album released a decent commercial success. It went to number two in the UK this time, uh, very nearly beating out Taylor Swift. Then there was a weird feud with Taylor Swift where Taylor's label realised they were 10,000 copies ahead. They'd sold 10,000 more than Folklore to dethrone Folklore. So then 
Taylor's record label released the CD a week early so that Fontaine's DC wouldn't take her number one and it was a weird sort of mini quasi feud between the two bands which was quite funny at the time. Alongside all the commercial success this album had it was also a critical darling reviewing to eights and nines across the board and even saw the band nominated for a Grammy in the mainstream rock category and not the sort of ugly stepchild of the alternative category. However, whilst everyone spent all the summer praising this record, I listened to it and like I said, I just didn't feel it. And I found a review that kind of summed up my feelings perfectly. This was on All Music. I'll just go and find the journalist's name right now. Liam Martin is the journalist's name and on his review for All Music, he gave the album three and a half stars and had this to say, which I think kind of sums up my thoughts on it perfectly. Setting a high bar on a debut album has always been a double-edged sword, as demonstrated here on Hero's Death, which is a fine album that is nonetheless a step down from the booze-soaked, sticky floors of Doggerel. Fontaine's DC's debut benefited from strong singles and a cohesive locational element to give it strength. Here the singles are not as strong and the, and the sweaty vibe from the debut is gone as if someone has switched on the air conditioning. But their second attempt only falls short of greatness in a relative sense as there is still plenty to love about the record. Overall this is a good record with lots to love as was said in that review. For me personally it didn't hit the heights that I wanted it to, but it got the band a Grammy nomination and nonetheless I was still very very excited to see what they would do next on their third record, Skinty Fear. Skinty Fear was announced in January of 2022 alongside the lead single Jackie Down the Line and after listening to that song this immediately felt like a return to form. My friend Sally says she knows you got a funny point of view. The title Skinty Fia comes from a phrase that Tom Call's great aunt used to say to him and it translates to the damnation of the deer and the cover and the album title are references to the Irish elk, also known as the Great Deer, which is now extinct. Between the title, the cover and Jackie down the line feeling like a little bit of a return to form, it was clear to see that the band were trying to get back some of the magic that was lost on a hero's death and become the Irish band once again. Lyrically, Jackie Down the Line felt more like Doggerel and musically it also felt more like Doggerel. I think just without some of the imperfections, the guitars obviously sounded cleaner, the mic sounded better. And I guess that comes with being a bigger band, but stylistically, I think it was written like a Doggerel song, not produced like a Doggerel song. The next single to be released is I Love You, and this is a song that I truly, truly love. It's a song that moved me profoundly over time. At first, I wasn't a massive fan of it, now, as we get there, I, I love it more and more and more. I Love You is a song about Ireland and just the lasting damage caused by Fianna Gael and Fianna Foyle and the politics in the country and how it's, it's fucked and it's in this self-fulfilling cycle of nonsense. But Green loves Ireland, but Ireland is this, and it's a fucking wonderful song. Please listen to it if you get a chance. Selling genocide and have got pride, I understand. I had to be there from the start, I had to be the fucking man. The issues for this album then, for me, start to come with the third and fourth singles, which were released before, and that's the title track, Skinny Fear and the song Roman Holiday. They're both very good songs, but they just don't have that spark, that thing that made me just, that thing in the back of my head that switched on. Whereas the first two tracks felt sort of more doggerly and more back to the roots and we're the Irish band again. You don't need to be from Ireland to understand and to get, but it really helps your appreciation of this band if you are, like me. Um, these songs didn't have that. These songs did not spark that thing in my mind. These songs didn't make me go, oh my God, that's this. Like they're good songs, but I guess nothing special about them for me when we're writing these songs about Ireland. With the album released looming closer and closer, I was hoping and I was praying that it was going to be more like I Love You and Jackie Down the Line and less like Skinty Fear, the crack and Roman Holiday. And as the record came out, it was more like the latter. I, the spark wasn't there. They were clearly making steps to be seen as the Irish band again, but it felt a little bit see-through and a little bit transparent to me. And I think maybe that's why I didn't love it. Between the titles opening track, uh, which I cannot pronounce, here's the name of it. Uh, it translates to In Our Hearts Forever. I know that. My Irish is honking as much as I lived there for all those years. I moved over too late to start to, to learn Irish at school. I really regret that. I really want to be able to speak Irish. I cannot though, so I will not try and pronounce that. Right, so Editor Jake is here. I've learned how to say it. It's uh, depending on whereabouts you are. It's uh, NR Griha Gajil or NR Griha Gajo. Probably NR Griha Gajo because the boys are from Dublin. Way! Uh, but that track and the accordion led the couple across the way felt a little bit like them being almost like you said we weren't the Irish band on a hero's death. We've got an accordion ballad and we've got a song title in Irish and. Uh, 
To be clear, I do really like both songs, but they just felt a little bit see-through. Now, it is weird for me to sit here and criticise the moves made on A Hero's Death and Skinty Fear, as I'm almost always the one person defending a band changing up their sound over the years to the death. If that's what the band wants to do, that's what the band wants to do. But I, there has to be some sort of progression. The Arctic Monkeys didn't go from sounding like this to this. To be one of the in one album there was 13 years in between those records and if they had gone from what that sound there and i bet you look good on the dance floor to the sound of star treatment and one album i too would probably be like what the fuck is that <laughs> and that is where my main issue with fontaine's dc lies now it feels like to me they wrote dog roll it got good success someone in their management team said you guys could maybe break America with the next record. And then they tried too hard to break America. And then when someone on their management team said, people don't like that you tried too hard to break America, they toned it back and were like, we're still the Irish band, but we're still going to make this music that we made specifically to, to go worldwide and break America. And we didn't have this through progression over like two or three albums to get there. And I'm going to be perfectly honest, if instead of A Hero's Death, there was an album in the middle that bridge the gap between Dog Roll and Skinty Fear. I think I would love Skinty Fear, and honestly, would probably love A Hero's Death if that became their fourth record. If this non-existent metal album bridged the gap between Dog Roll and Skinty Fear, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be making this video. I would have no reason to make this video as I would just be someone who would love the band from start to finish and have no issues with them. But to me, there is no real through line on to how they got to this sound and to me and to quite a few people I know who have followed Fontaine's DC for as long as I have and around about that time it feels like that to a lot of people that I know. Overall I do like Skinty Fear and it does seem weird that I've spent so long being so negative about a record that I enjoy. I think it's a good solid out and uh, all the songs on it are good to great but I don't feel a real cohesion through it and nothing about it sparks that just intense joy that Dog Roll did and that's my main issue with it. Three, four years ago, five, you know, from around 2018, right through to the summer of 2020, they were my favourite band in the world. They were this band I had this intense personal connection to. And over the course of two albums in, what, two and a half, three years, they managed to almost entirely take away all the connection that I felt to them. And I guess that's where my main issue with those records lie. There is nothing on either of those albums that exhibits the total rawness and passion, with the exception of I Love You, that was exhibited on Dog Roll for me. There's nothing on those records that makes me feel the way that Dog Roll makes me feel, except I Love You. And it just kind of sucks, man. They were my favourite band in the world, and now I'm, I'm kind of indifferent about them. Which sucks, and it really impacts my enjoyment of a record that's getting to feel, which is something I enjoying a bubble but in the wider context I don't really. So what's next for Fontaine's DC? Where do they go? Sadly for me I don't think they're going to go back to the dog roll sort of sound. A Hero's Death got them a Grammy nomination, uh, Skinty Fear put them on the map worldwide so as much as dog roll gained them their only Mercury Prize nomination they got a Grammy nomination for A Hero's Death and Skinty Fear put them into the stratosphere. So I don't think that I don't think more more Dublin poetry set to surf rock riffs is coming back anytime soon. However, if they follow the Skinty Fia model closer or closely for their next record, maybe tone down the scale of ambition a little tiny bit. If they make a record no longer set to conquer the world, because they already have conquered the world, that sounds more like Skinty Fia than it does A Hero's Death, I, I think they could be onto an absolute career define or something that will make me regret making this video moaning on the internet about how... They don't make songs about Tan and Guinness anymore. I truly believe that this band has the whole world at their feet and I am truly, truly confident that they will win me back on their side one day. This next album could be my favourite album of all time. That is just how talented they are and that is still the connection I have to them even despite these two records and the performing in my eyes. I think they're one of the best bands that Ireland has ever produced and I love them so much. So much so that I've made a 20 minute video crying about them on the internet. But what do I know? I'm just an idiot with a camera and too much free time. So that is it for me on this video. 
leave a like if you enjoyed and please do subscribe leave your comments down below let me know do you like what Fontaine's DC are doing Hannah Connell do you think I'm being an idiot when I say that Dogma was better than anything else let me know uh share us around show everyone even the lads and maybe they'll make Dogma too if I ask real nice <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time